Hi, I will present about interpreting and generalizing deep neural networks in uh, scientific machine learning. So, um, as we all know, deep learning has become really popular uh, these days in different scientific computing tasks, whether that's increasing the quality of the data, making predictions, or just in uh, inside the loop calculations like uncertainty quantification or optimization. But there are two key challenges in scientific deep learning. One is generalization to out of distribution data or really extrapolation. And the other one is lack of interpretability. So interpretability is really important because it provides trust in our model. It helps us get a better understanding of the system that we are studying. And also having an interpretable model helps us debug our model because we can do that in a more a rigorous fashion as opposed to just trial and error. And also extrapolation and generalization is important because once you want to uh, deploy our machine learning models and the user wants to use it, having some level of extrapolation and robustness is desirable because a lot of times the user might not exactly know the boundary where the machine learning model was trained or the training landscape might not, the, its boundary might not be very clear. So having some level of uh, extrapolation accuracy makes our deep learning model much more robust. Okay, so how can we do a generalization to out of distribution data or extrapolation. There are different ways to achieve this in the literature with different success, but uh, the issue with most of these problems is that they often require retraining the neural network. So our idea here was that can we develop a, a generalization improvement strategy that doesn't require retraining and could be done completely in a post-processing step. So we were inspired by the process of human thinking in designing this uh, uh, strategy. And I'm going to explain it through an example. Let's say you're studying for an exam and you're doing that in a data-driven fashion. What do I mean? So you're instead of studying in a physics-based fashion, fashion where you would read the lecture notes and you read the actual material, you're studying in a data-driven manner, meaning that you're only studying through sample questions from prior exams. So you're only studying questions and answers. And then you go on a test. If a question comes that's exactly the same as what you studied, which is exactly your training data, you can quickly write the response if you memorize well, and that's exactly what a neural network does. So now, if a question comes on the exam that's uh, similar to what you studied, not exactly the same, but similar, so this is what we call an in-distribution test, uh, then you can, if you learned something meaningful by studying those questions, you didn't only memorize them, then you should be able to also write the response quickly. And this is exactly the same with a neural network. As long as it's learning something meaningful and it's not just copying the labels, it should be able to interpolate accuracy. Now, the third... Uh, scenario is when a question comes that's uh, completely different from what you studied. So this is what we call an out of distribution test or extrapolation. So now what do you do? Uh, what a human <clears throat> probably does is that you, you know, you only study sample questions. So in your brain, you go through all the sample questions you studied, you review them, and you try to come up with some interpret interpretation and reasoning based on those questions you studied. And then based on that, and also if any prior knowledge you have, you try to build some sort of model in your brain to answer the new question. So this is exactly what we want to do with neural networks. And the way we do it is like this. Let's say you're give, we're given a neural network that's already trained, and then we're given an input that's out of distribution, so it's extrapolation scenario. What we do is that we take the neural network, we probe the neural network inside the training landscape. What do I mean? We give a, a input functions to the neural network, it's dozens and you know, maybe hundreds of input functions that are uh, within the training landscape, and we quickly you know, obtain an output, right? Because it's already trained, so it's, it quickly gives us an output for each of them. And then now we have a pairs of inputs and outputs. Then what we do is that we uh, fit an uh, interpretable model to that, uh, to that uh, data. And we do that, as I'll explain in a moment, using sparse kernel regression. And then as a result, we get an interpretable surrogate model, which is nothing but a sum of uh, integral equations, which I'm going to explain. And then you use this interpretable model to answer the new question, which is the new uh, input function that's out of distribution. 
Okay, so now the question becomes, how do I build an interpretable model? So this brings us to the field of explainable AI, XAI. We can broadly categorize XAI into two class of models. We have the by design approaches, and these approaches incorporate interpretability into their architecture design right from the get-go. So right from the beginning, they're designing their, their, their strategy to be interpretable. The second class of approaches are post hoc approaches, where they, uh, they just interpret a black box model as a post processing step. So the, the, the issue with by design approaches is that they limit the expressive power of the uh, neural network. So you will not be able to, or if the, it's not a neural network, if it's an other machine learning approach, it's again likely going to limit its expressive power. You will have a hard time fitting complex data. Postdoc approaches do not compromise accuracy, but they're often used in a local fashion in the literature, meaning that you give me an instance of an input, I explain how that input goes to the output. So our idea was to build a flexible XAI framework that could be applied either as global or local post hoc, or even as a by design approach, depending on what we desire to do. Uh, so before I proceed, I just want to quickly review that some by design XAI approaches, you can think of Cindy as a by design XAI approach. Uh, <clears throat> symbolic regression is also another one. Uh, and you can also incorporate by design interpretable models within a deep neural network. So for example, you can define an interpretation task and you can penalize for interpretation with a loss function inside the neural network. And then there are post hoc approaches, which are usually based on calculating some sort of gradient uh, using back propagation to measure sensitivity of output with respect to inputs and try to explain how sensitive the model is with respect to different inputs. Okay, so our key idea was based on integral equations. So just to motivate here, let's say we are given a linear uh, PDE. So L is a linear operator. U is what you want to find, and f of x is the input function. So from Green's function theorem, we know that we can invert the operator, and we can write the solution as such using the Green's operator through the Green function g. And what the, the, nice, the nice thing about this integral equation is that it's interpretable. And if you give me an input function f, I can, if I know the Green's function, I can give evaluate the integral and give you the output. It, interestingly, if you also look into convolutional neural networks, you'll find that their building blocks are based on these convolutional operators that are kind of similar types of integrals. So they're based on these convolution integrals where based on an input f, you know if you know you have a kernel that you can integrate it to get the output. And then finally, radial basis functions, Gaussian processes, they're also based on similar concepts and you have these popular kernels used, uh, squared exponential kernels used in those applications. Finally, also the neural operators, which are a very hot topic these days, they also build on similar ideas and they have in, uh, integral equations uh, with predefined kernels into their uh, you know, deep learning architecture. Okay, so it seems like integral equations are key in providing a mapping between functions. So we want to use them for our interpretation or interpretable model. So the way we approach this is through functional data analysis, FDA. So FDA is a branch of statistics that analyzes data in the form of smooth functions rather than discrete data. So our goal specifically here is that we want to provide a mapping between an input field variable, which is represented as this function f of x. This could be, for example, a, a heterogeneous elasticity, material property, for example. And you want to map that to an output, which could also be a field variable u of x, for example, a stress field. Or it could be a simply a single value, let's say the peak stress. So we want to find these uh, functional mappings. So the way we will do that is by using this idea of functional linear models within FDA, where you can write these mappings in these integral equations that maps you from F to U, and you do that through this kernel psi. So the goal in functional linear models is to find this kernel psi. The current approaches, they either predefine psi or they uh, you know, use some expansions. But the challenge here is that you know, this choice is really not clear. And a single choice for psi might not be really accurate or expressive enough for complex scientific applications. So, uh, so be, uh, if you're interested in learning more about functional data analysis, I 
I recommend these two excellent textbooks that are written on this topic. Okay, so here's our proposed model. So um, the idea we had was that instead of pre-specifying pre -specifying these kernels, why don't we <coughs> define a library of kernels? So I take, I define a large library through this matrix of all possible candidate kernels I can think about with all possible candidate smoothing parameter, the bandwidth within those kernels that I can, that I can you know, think about or I can you know, guess. And I put them all in this large library. Also, for to increase the expressive power, I do some nonlinearity on top of that. So I really make it a generalized functional linear model by lifting this function f. So some of these columns here are based on this input function f lifted using, for example, polynomial lifting. And then also I can add some nonlinear function g on top of this integral equation. So you can think of this nonlinear function g as some sort of activation function. So this really becomes what we call in FDA a generalized functional linear model. And then my goal is to you know, find these coefficients w that I can, once I know them, I can sum these integral equations and write my final model in this analytical form. Now, uh, what we do is that we use sparse regression on this library. So, you know, those of you who are familiar with Cindy, you immediately realize that this is very similar to Cindy's idea. So we would do sparse regression on this library and uh, we find these coefficients W. So the idea is that we want many of these coefficients to be zero, so we get a more interpretable model. Um, and uh, we write the final solution like this. Okay, and just to give you an idea, here are some of the uh, types of integral candidate integral equations that we use in our library. And you know, to find the coefficients W, we really have two choices. We can do sparse regression. This is the kind of optimization that Cindy works on. And here, uh, the coefficient lambda provides a trade-off between interpretability and accuracy of the regression. And we can also do an L2 regularization, which has this closed form solution used through the normal equations. And uh, uh, here, the parameter lambda provides a trade-off between the stability of the linear system of equations that I, sol that I solve here, which happen to be very uh, um, ill-conditioned, and uh, a trade-off between stability of the linear system of equations and also accuracy. Uh, so in the examples I present here today, I'm going to be all of them I use sparse regression. Uh, uh, and uh, in the paper, we also briefly talk about L2 regularization. Okay, so I can uh, present three broad applications for this framework. One is post hoc black box interpretation. So what does that mean? So you give me a neural network, you want to interpret it. I probe the neural network as I explained, and I fit a, my interpretable model to that data. And I can do that either locally or globally, or I can even do that for out of distribution region of the neural network to explain how the neural network behaves when it's in the extrapolation regime. So in the results you'll see in a moment, the, I'm going to call this the neural network driven interpretable model. The second strategy is to do just a by design XA approach, meaning that I don't even need a neural network. I don't even consider a neural network. I directly train my model on the training data. So here is like really by design XA approach, and I call this the data driven interpretable model. Finally, we can think about a hybrid computing strategy where if I have an in distribution mod data, I use my trained neural network. If I have something that's out of distribution, I use my interpretable model in a hybrid settings. I want to talk more about this third uh, strategy today or third class of applications. Okay, so here's the first example. In the first example, we want to predict the strain energy from heterogeneous material property. We use the mechanical MNES and MNES data sets where we map these hand digit uh, uh, and hand uh, cap letters uh, from their pixel bitmaps to an elastic moduli using this equation. So then we have a heterogeneous linear elastic material, and then we you know, apply loading to it, and we measure the, max, the strain energy, and we want to um, um, predict that. So for out of distribution data, we select a different parameter S in this mapping. So he, here you're looking at the box plots of the error. The left three one are gonna be the uh, training data for the neural network, the neural network driven interpretable model and the data driven interpretable model. And the right three ones will be for the testing data. And here by test, I mean out of distribution tests or extrapolation. So what we immediately see is that 
and I should also mention these box plots, the, the risk squares in the box, box, box plots, they represent the non-outlier min and max. And then these red dots are the outliers. And these are based on aggregating the entire data set to, 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 pre, to build this box plots error. So what we see is that the interpretable models improve out of distribution generalization, as you can see here. So the errors are coming down for these distributions of errors. And we also see that the interpretable models have, in this case, comparable training accuracy to the neural network in the training region. The second example is predicting the velocity field from heterogeneous permeability. So this case is an image to image task, and we have a porous media flow problem. We define the permeability through this equation and the coefficients A and B, when we extrapolate them, then we produce the out of distribution data. So we see that the interpretable models improve generalization, as you can see here. So these errors are coming down compared to the, the neural network. And we also see that uh, in the training regime, the interpretable models, as you can imagine, are not as accurate as the neural network uh, model. They don't have the expressive power of that, of the neural network. But interestingly, in this case, they're reducing the the uh, the outliers, okay, and they're providing you know reasonably well accuracy as well in the training region. Okay, so the next example is uh, predicting high fidelity water shear stress from low fidelity velocity data, uh, and the motivation is that getting low fidelity data is much easier, and calculating near wall fluid flow is challenging. Either it requires high resolution computationally or experimentally, it also has its own challenges. And here we're motivated by blood flow problems. So we create this 2D idealized fluid flow in a constricted vessel. The low fidelity simulations come from a very coarse mesh with P1, P1 elements. So this is first order shape functions for velocity and pressure. And then we have 20% increased viscosity. So this represents a dissipative a numerical computing strategy with artificial diffusion. The high fidelity data comes from a very high resolution mesh with P to P1 elements, quadratic shape functions for velocity. And just to give you an idea, here's how the low fidelity mesh looks like. And here's how the low fidelity velocity results look like. And we want to map this low fidelity velocity results to the high, in this region, away from the wall, to the high fidelity volatile stress at the wall. Okay, so here's the results. So we train for a certain range of Reynolds number and for the out of distribution, we go to higher Reynolds numbers. And what we see here is that the, the interpretable models, so if I zoom into the training region error, we can see that the, in the training region, uh, the um, interpretable models have good training accuracy. And interestingly, the data-driven interpretable model that's directly trained based on data is slightly better accuracy in the training regime, regime in this case compared to the neural network. And when you look at the out of distribution data, you can see that the, the, major, the majority of the distribution of the error is significantly reduced, as you can see here, for the interpretable models, but they produce slightly higher outliers compared to the neural network in this test case. Finally, we can also do local interpretation. So here we consider again the porous media problem. We have this black region here with a permeable region. Uh, so, uh, and then we define permeability through this equation. And, extra, and in this case, you don't have extrapolation. We just train this and we just want to interpret locally. So by locally, I mean that we interpret it instead of inter uh, interpreting over the entire parameter regime that was trained locally in a subset of that. So that makes the interpretable model to you know, do its job much easier because it's less variability in the data. So what we see here is that the interpretable models give excellent error with respect to the neural networks. And local interpretation has better errors. It's easier, as you can imagine. And of course, we cannot extrapolate now with local interpretation because we don't see the entire uh, data. So to summarize, we developed an interpretable framework for interpreting and generalizing deep neural networks. The framework is flexible. It could be applied either local, global, or post hoc or by design. And it reduces extrapolation error in most of the test cases and has comparable training accuracy. There are several remaining challenges. The predefinition of the library is you know, an open question. How do we define these kernels, these hyperparameters in the library? Uh, specifying what we call in-distribution and out-of-distribution in complex problems is not as trivial. Uh, there's always a trade-off between explanation, how well we explain, how interpretable we are, and how well we extrapolate. So there's a trade-off there. And it's uh, extension to other problems, like time-dependent problems, parametric problems, pins, inverse problems are future work. So if you're interested in learning more about uh, this work, I uh, 
encourage you to look into our archive paper. Uh, and this is the title of the paper. And uh, thank you.